Is it some devil that crawls inside of you? There we are. Hello, folks. Welcome to the Bad Etiquette Podcast. Hope you enjoy film noir music, because I'm listening to that in my truck while I drive down the highway. Just left the house. Feels pretty good. The music, honestly, a good vibe. Giving me great feelings. Excuse me, man. Sorry, mister in the big fucking truck. What's up with the... All this talk. Everyone's saying, oh, big lifted trucks. You just have that and drive that. Because you got a small dick. Well, I'll tell you something, guys. I have a small dick. Can I get the big fucking truck now? Jesus Christ. I'm I'm just... I'm just being spoiled. I have a perfect truck SUV thing. Oh. Fucking text message ruining my music will you <sighs> oh okay guys what are we doing yep get the fuck out of the way we don't need to go 10 middle of the road 10 miles an hour you fucking believe some people there's gonna be a lot of uh incidental road rage and hopefully no incidents but that's just how i drive uh so you guys are gonna get a little taste of that sorry um got quite a temper when it comes to st- stupidity and driving like this guy do you see the speed limit dude it says 35 you can go 35 that means it's okay just fucking go god damn it dude i'm not even doing this like to be like dramatic or theatric like i'm not making this up that like this is genuinely how fucking people drive around here oh look see that speed limit sign that's a five that's a five five that's 55 god fucking sammy hagar can't even drive 55 don't worry, guys. Uh, that that'll come back to haunt me. This asshole just put his fucking uh, hand out, waved at me. What's he doing? I don't understand. Is he waving me ahead? I might have to go ahead here. All right, guys, we're doing some doing some evasive driving. Was kind of kind of polite. Giving a little farmer wave. Yep, it's all good, dude. You're in a Toyota. I'm in a Toyota truck. We're all good. We're friends. We're family. Toyota, uh, when you're here, your family. What is that? That's not. That's TGI Fridays, isn't it? Or is that Applebee's? Or is that Olive Garden? I don't know. It's one of those overrated places, I'm sure. <sighs> I don't know how the uh, back roy, ba- back roy, pff, fucking background ambient noise is for everyone. Uh, but my voice has got to be coming through clearly. I have the microphone right up to my cock holster here, so. Here we go. I'm gonna actually put it on cruise control. I fucking, ever since these goddamn gas prices, I have fallen in love with cruise control. Tom Cruise Control. It is amazing. Just chilling. Fucking, I I don't get road rage nearly as much when I'm in cruise control. Cause I'm just like, it's like, I'm not even, I'm not even the one driving like this. Like the car's doing it. You know, it makes me realize how close we were to like autopilot, like Tesla, where like that shit just drives itself. That's so fucking cool. My car's just driving itself. Like I'm steering and I hit the brakes and, you know, tell it when to fucking slow down, speed up, whatever. But pretty much, God, I am gripping the microphone like it's my first time on stage again. I'm fucking squeezing it to death. Finger is killing me. What an idiot big white belt moves too you guys ever go to jujitsu uh and you start out white belt they just have death grips they just grab things as hard as they can and just hold them there most of your uh little scratches and bruises and stuff are from like younger more inexperienced white belts and stuff they're just snatching shit up they just think you're supposed to hurt your fingers or something i mean it's probably a good good thing for something, but it just makes me think of that fucking SpongeBob episode where he's like, firmly grasp it or something. 
shoves the jellyfish net right through the cast. Just, it's pretty rad. That's pretty much what white belts do. Oh, I just picked my nose, no handed steering with my knee around a corner, cruise control. I can't wait till they find, this is gonna be like the black box of stupidity they find in the car accident. Like, oh, well, there was a recording device next to this giant head that was decapitated sitting in the passenger seat. I thought it was a whole nother person. Oh man, thank you everyone who listened to the Stratera Sphere episode, whatever, what was that, 98, 99? I don't even remember which one it was, but um, uh, where I was talking about starting the Stratera or the Atomoxetine, the ADHD medication. Um, everyone who, the only thing they seem to have taken from that episode was that I have, I had ejaculation problems. So now they just bring that up every time they see me. So thanks guys. Real, real rad, real cool. You're, you're only a true friend if you come up to your friend and remind them that their dick didn't work that time or doesn't work or whichever. I have friends, they've kind of, you know, been like, hey, you ever tr try Viagra or Blue Chews? And I'm like, dude, come on. I'm fucking like 26. Of course I've tried that shit. Are you kidding me? It works great. Um, you know, it's uh, good friends talk to each other about each other's penises, you know? And I'm sure great friends show each other each other's penises. Uh... I got told I was old at a bar last night. I went to the fucking bar across the street, this place I'd try to avoid, um, but I was desperate and gas prices are insane and I wasn't fe feeling like going cruise control somewhere. So I uh, went across the street and some fucking frat boy looking motherfucker asked where I was from. And I was like, ah, you know, I'm from Lompoc, you know? And he's like, I was like, you know, where are you from? Orchid. And I'm like, that's cool. And he's like, what year did you graduate? And I thinking I was going to like, you know, maybe I graduated with him or maybe like I was, uh, like barely an upperclassman. And I was like, uh, 2013. And he goes, Oh dude, you're old. Excuse me, bitch. That was only nine years ago. Yeah, I've only been able to drink in this bar for six or something. Six, five, six, six. I don't know. Motherfucker. He was barely 21. It might have been his 21st birthday. You know how fucking, like, weird it is to be in your 20s and then another 20-something-year-old tells you you're old? Like, he was wrong, right? I should still feel young and feel normal. Like, I feel younger now than I did when I was like his age. When I was 22, 23, I was a grizzled old grumpy motherfucker. I felt like I was 53. You could just look into my eyes and just, you could tell there was something wrong there. I'm not sure what I did to change it, but I feel like I aged in reverse recently. Like I de-aged a little bit. Pretty good, you know? Like didn't didn't do a bad uh, bad job at taking care of myself skin looks better actually i'll tell you what it is definitely definitely one of the things is nasal breathing breathing through your nose and i know you guys that follow me on instagram see me share that shit all the time like if i could force anyone to do any one thing just be a straight up fucking dictator and just you know just be full-blown fascist like requiring north korea on people it would, I would make everyone breathe through their nose, Ser seriously. And if you have a deviated septum or it's all fucked up from doing coke, well, guess what? That, that's your mistake. That's your problem now. Not my fault you can't breathe through your nose. You're the one buying ch fucking cheap stepped on baby powder shit thinking you were cool for doing coke in your shed. Okay? I don't care. <sighs> this music's actually very appropriate very calming i've been obsessed with film noir lately like more than usual i pretty much have always been interested in it before i even knew there was a subgenre or a title for it before i could categorize it and uh turn the cruise control off getting on a windy road getting on a dangerous road and uh yeah i saw the batman in the uh in the good old cinema, the cinema. Excuse me. 
And let me tell you, the Batman, I never thought I'd say this, and I certainly didn't think I'd say this when they announced Robert Pattinson was going to be the new Bruce Wayne Batman. But the Batman might be my favorite Batman movie. So weird to say and think. I was listening to the soundtrack at work the other day because I thankfully have a job where I can put headphones in most of the time. And it was it was just getting me, man. The score was great. Everything about that movie really fucking just jumbled my expectations. And I, I'm not going to give you any spoilers here, so don't worry. But god damn. At the end when Catwoman dies, holy shit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um... Yeah, fucking good ass movie. I've just been. It was a film noir. They like made it a hard boiled detective movie, just a real like down to earth feeling Batman movie, and it was so fucking good. And it just got me all excited about the rest of these neo noir movies that I've watched over the years. And I've been watching literally nothing but Chinatown and Blood Simple, and the two Jakes and like just going back to all these classics and finding, uh, finding these new ones. I want to check out bound is on my list. I don't know if you guys ever heard about that one, but I think it's like Jennifer Tilly and some, someone else, some other babe, but it's like these two erotic lesbian thriller noir movie. You know, I'm, I'm in right there. You know, you, you had me at lesbians, but Neo noir and lesbians. God damn. God damn. It sounds a little bit of perfect. Who doesn't like lesbians? Even like straight girls are like, I watch lesbian porn. Come on. Let's be real. What is that? What is that about? What I want to know. I need to ask. Like, how come, like, even straight chicks or, you know, self proclaimed straight chicks? I don't, I mean, is anyone straight? I don't know. Um, just fucking. Go for the go go for the old rug muncher review, you know. It's wild. I mean, to be fair, when I when I was a young lesbian, that's all I would watch was lesbian porn. I think the only reason I got laid is because I knew where the clitoris was. They could just tell, you know. Chicks could just like mentally like, oh, like this guy knows what's up. I can tell. He, we have the same inside info. <laughs> uh. I mean, I didn't really know where it was, but I was like, every time I watch the fucking, the, the two ladies there, uh, they're always hammering away at the top of the slit. What's that about? Hammering away at the top of the slit. God bless. Can you guys hear that music at all? It's not up very high, but like, it's keeping me going. Hmm probably real real like bumpy sounding too i don't have the quietest car in the world this vehicle isn't like the most discreet it's funny the last time i was doing one of these like a car cast i'm just gonna release this as as a regular episode probably but the last time i did one of these was uh i think i was also talking about batman still so that's fucking weird because that was maybe two years ago (sighs) i've been doing this podcast a long ass time barely broke 100 episodes anyways um video's coming guys i know you guys are at least a couple people that give a shit video's coming gonna have a good old-fashioned visual podcast as well as the audio um not really sure if i have the equipment to load and edit and upload and store all that yet but we'll get there i have a I have a decent job right now, so hopefully I'll be able to afford a basic camera, something simple, something easy, something sexy, and give you guys the give you guys the podcast you deserve. Because I know all the audio, like I have, you know, 50, 70 episodes on YouTube, just audio only. For those of you who aren't a big app fans or phone podcast listening fans. 
that's the funniest thing is I still have people ask me where they can find the podcast. And uh, I got to be honest with you, if you don't already listen to podcasts, I'm genuinely surprised that this is your first one or this would be your first one. You know what I mean? But I guess everyone has to start somewhere, right? I started somewhere weird. I used to listen to Brett Easton Ellis, the B podcast and the No Sleep podcast and the WTF podcast and Monday morning podcast and Joe Rogan experience. And I still listen to those last two, but had to start somewhere. I used to listen to a bunch. Did you just swerve into my lane, you stupid cunt? Fuck, dude. You guys might actually hear me die because some fucking retard on the road. I wonder if that's admissible as evidence. Like, well, here on the recording, it clearly says that this retard swerved into his lane and killed him. So the, uh, my, my, de- my defendant's fa- uh, family here, the, the client's family, uh, they, they'd like to press charges. We're going to pursue this idiot. Make sure they'll never drive again. <laughs> I said, call me sir, God damn it! Nothing like a good old streaming of consciousness just verbally diarying out of your cock holster on a Sunday afternoon. No Sunday scaries today. I had quite a bit to drink last night, but here I am, perfectly good. I had some knockoff Pedialyte bullshit and uh, had a lot of good sleep. Took the Stratera today. Um, So I think, I mean, honestly, I think I'm good. I think I'm not going to do anything egregious, intellectually, at least. Keeping it going here. Keeping it going here on March uh, 18th, 19th. 20th? 20th? Say the, say, the, say the 21st? 20th? Today's the 20th. Today's the first day of spring, guys. Happy spring. Um, winter's over. Uh, it rained yesterday, ironically. Not ironically, but it was like one last day of rain before we go. Winter left its mark, punctuated itself there. That was pretty cool of it to rain on my car a day after I got it washed out of fucking nowhere. So thank you. I mean, maybe it's my fault for not getting a car wash for, I don't know, the entire calendar year of 2022 so far. (sighs) Dude, I want to know what the fuck all these people are just stopping on Harris grade for. Like, there's just tons of people just parked, and I have no idea what they're doing. This is like the, like, make out or, like, lover's lane type of bullshit here, but it's always looks like a bunch of fucking incels and like virginy like frat boys like the the swag kid type you know what i mean look two i got one car three two car that guy's by himself i mean i guess i'm by myself but like i'm not gonna let anyone know about it. i'm not gonna go park and broadcast at every passing stranger how fucking uneventful and in 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 event in inventionable i don't know may, may make up a new word Um, yeah. It's been a, it's been an interesting month, man. I, uh, survived COVID, man. It was crazy, man. I was sick for a whole day and I like coughed some loogies up for like another week after that, bro. So be careful out there, guys. Especially if you're fucking huge you fat bitch (laughs) well how funny was it like uh, the pandemic started and then fat people were like what do you mean i can't eat like shit and not exercise and not take care of myself and get sick and not die what is that horse shit like every like everyone that was just an unhealthy piece of shit was like shocked that getting sick was gonna fuck them up I love people like that out there you know at the beginning of COVID it was just like oh thank god fucking please trim the fat and then it literally kind of did it killed a bunch of fatties I think something like 75% of all fatalities were from obese people or obese people with comorbidities which I think obesity is a comorbidity um 
it's a comorbidity actually, but that's neither here nor there. <sighs> yeah. Uh, sorry if you lost a fat person in your life to COVID I, or, or a loved one in general. Um, for what it's worth, fat people give better hugs. Um, I like them around. Uh, all my fat friends are still around, so I'm a little... Uh, little uh, I just waved at a chick. Not a chick. She was like 50. Uh, with a forerunner. She didn't even wave back. Why do you... Fu- I drive a forerunner. Other people drive forerunners. It's like a... There's like a cult... Like... It's like a... Has like a following, this thing. There's like pages for these kind of cars. The Gen 3 on a... On Facebook and stuff. I mean, there's a page for everything, but you know, there's not like a page for fucking like Toyota Yaris's. I hope that'd be horrible. But like, no one seems to be that fucking cool to where they're gonna like wave back and like give me a good good old hey, how you doing? Oh, is there lyrics to this one? God, I fucking I I've been listening to this playlist for like a week and a half straight, and there's two or three songs that have vocals totally kills the fucking mood. I can't pretend I'm in a noir movie anymore. I can't pretend I'm some hard-boiled detective, yeah? The slut came in and left her fucking menses all over the bedspread here, and her husband didn't like that. Shot the old man's best friend she found in bed with him, and then smeared her fucking face and all the menses before he peeled it off in the bathroom and stapled it to the mirror. I didn't even know stables could go through a mirror with Watkins. <clears throat> Script I'm working on. Sorry. You guys enjoying World War Three? I uh, wasn't really scared until someone posted a infographic video or whatever of like how Russia could just nuke the place we live the United States of awesome so it, when you think of like the earth and like planes and like flying and motions and transport I don't know like do, do we not all think of it as like the the flat map not that the earth isn't flat guys right am I right half my following okay um but <laughs> i like do you, you think of it as like oh it's gonna go from left to right like russia's over there on the far right of the map so they're just gonna shoot something far to the left or they'd have to shoot you know far to the right and go all the way around and then hit us and that's a long way pacific ocean's like one of the biggest oceans in the world you know if not the biggest it's pretty big um so you never even thought about it and then this video shows a simulation of Russia just shooting a fucking missile over the North Pole, just fucking over the top, and hitting the U.S., the United States of, oh, yeah, bitch, it's awesome here, just fucking, just right over the top, right over Santa's fucking front porch, just gonna launch one into fucking, hopefully one of the Dakotas, no one needs them. You know, especially the fucking South Dakota. What do you fuckheads have against my podcast? Download it already, you cocksuckers. Maybe they... Like, they could just launch, like, right over the top. I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think about that shit. That's crazy. It's just like, oh, um... Oopsie daisy. It's like playing monkey in the middle with Santa. He's like, holy shit, you're gonna hit my reindeer! It's fucking... Fucking gnarly. It's pretty gnarly, right? Is that not tripping everyone out? Like, I mean, honestly, it, two things. I, I was having this co- uh, conversation with my boss, good old, good old guy. He's like fifty-nine years old or whatever. But he, uh, if you ask some people, um, he was saying, "Yeah, I don't want to live anywhere that's close enough to live through a nuclear blast to where I'm gonna have side effects." Or like, he doesn't want to live that close. He'd rather live close enough to die or far away enough to not have, like, immediate, you know, radioactive side effects and stuff. And I was like, yeah, that's true. Like, I really don't give a fuck. If the nuke, like, if the nuke hits us, it's like, well, that's not my problem. I will be gone in an instant. I'm fine. Dude, just all taxes and forgiven, all heartbreaks gone. Everyone you ever lost, you have a chance to see again, depending on how fucking, you know religious they were i suppose what if that's what happened in the afterlife if you like you're so religious like they're like well like 
you believed this, so the simulation just made it happen. Like, but your son here, he did not. He was a very bad boy in your eyes. Did not believe in your good Lord Savior, Jesus. So uh, he's just in the earth, melt, like being ant food right now. That's just how it goes. And then you just like have to like live in this horrible fucking simulation of heaven or hell or whatever. Or like you like the only idea of who your son or chi- children are or like or is in hell. You just can like look through a little viewfinder and just check them out getting burned and raped by demons horny thorny cocks and putting tits on their head like little Nicky. That kind of suck, wouldn't it? So yeah, you know, new, if I'm close enough, the nuke's just gonna make you know make me disappear. Hopefully, I won't grow grow like five penises. Then I might have a, the size of a whole penis. Maybe I'll finally get that big lifted truck though. What if I got five? What if the what if the nuke like radioactivity, radioactive radiation? There we go. <laughs> oh Jesus, maybe I already got some fucking radiation going on. What if the radiation gave you five small dicks and you just got a fleet of like five big lifted trucks? Yeah, I'm recording a podcast. What do you want, bitch? Sorry. Um, just like talking random shit to people because they can't do anything about it. That'd be cool, you know. Five trucks is better than no trucks. I like my truck. It's a SUV truck, but on I know it's an SUV technically, but on all the paperwork it says Toyota Truck Forerunner. SUV is like an afterthought. And I found out that the original Toyota Forerunner was the Toyota truck with like a like a sh- camper shell on it essentially. And I was like, that is essentially. Hey, she has a Forerunner. There's another Forerunner. Nice. As I'm talking about it, too. Isn't that wild? It's not that wild, but still pretty cool. And I, didn't, I didn't give her the wave. She probably thought I was an asshole. She was a little too young and attractive. I would think I'd get in trouble with the old lady if I waved at someone like that. Even though it was not attractive, I'm just saying, like, you know, like, she's better than the 50-year-old I saw on the road back there that didn't give me a... Oh, there's another forerunner. Oh, but they're in the Burger King drive through I don't think I'm going to give them any attention. Hey, how's it going? And it's just a fucking old married couple. It looked like sad. <sighs> Wasting a forerunner. Maybe not. Maybe they're like literally like on a fucking killing spree and they're just like, oh, I'm hungry. Let's go to Burger King. No one will ever find us there. No one looks there. No one cares about what's going on there. They remodeled. This is how fucking sad this town is. They remodeled and like refurbished and updated the Burger King here. Like that. They, that's they, that. They thought that was like going to be the big thing that was going to like bring it back. Still sucks. Also, they're just now remodeling and updating the Burger King here after 26, 7, 30 years. The Burger King's been there my entire life. There's no playground there. There never has been. Makes no sense. My grandma used to take me to the, like, Burger King playground out of town because this one didn't have one because it's so shitty. When I'd stay with her, good times also the fucking thing about Lompoc everyone just gets stuck here and stuck here because they can't drive fast enough to get the fuck out of town they cannot drive the speed limit I'm just asking for the speed limit just the bare minimum just go that like I'm literally going 30 miles an hour there's five cars in the lane next to me behind like going slower than me makes no goddamn sense whatsoever doesn't make any sense huh oh well okay never mind they're passing me and she's a hundred this music's getting pretty intense i'm liking it (sighs) but yeah i I don't know i don't know what i've been doing to like de-age myself if that's even the right word just kind of been taking care of myself a little better um i think getting covid like I said, I was sick for a whole day, and then I—I I guess I, I technically I, I was sick for a while, considering I had to like hawk up loogies and spit them out for like a week or two afterwards. But the re- I only had like a fever and like bad symptoms for maybe a whole twenty-four hours. Kylie actually put it best. She was like, uh, 
oh this guy's got a big land cruiser check that out nice that's a like a 95 or something that's a fucking that's that's the vehicle you want in the event of the uh, nuclear fallout and apocalypse that's something you'd i'd get five land cruisers if i had to get radiation poisoning and get five tiny dicks what if it gave me a pussy though that'd be hilarious just never leave home again ah, i don't need to go on a date fuck you yeah she, uh, kylie said the way she put it she's like covid not that bad i've had hangovers that are worse than this and i know she has because she's had some fucking wild hangovers but it's true i also like as far as hangovers go i had way worse hangovers most hangovers worse than the covid i had hey another foreigner how you doing waved nothing got it that's what one two three four in a row nothing fucking cocksuckers <sighs> i don't even know where i'm going i'm literally like in a turn lane for a red at a red light for a street that no one goes down this is stupid fucking stupid you can hear the cars judging me because they're like why are you going down there no one nothing down there idiot idiot fuck idiot fuck is one of my favorite favorite insults i've noticed it's just it's so harsh just so like raw just, idiot fuck oh so good if someone called you an idiot fuck like you'd be like oh, it's on bitch we're gonna fight you know what i mean if someone called me an idiot fuck i wouldn't take that lightly i'd be like i am a fucking idiot but fuck you god i wish i uh wish i was a filmmaker sometimes i think i could really do some good cinematography Maybe not, you know, not something great, but just like regular, regular old filming in the small town. Make like my own little homemade noir movie. Sounds kind of nice. Homemade noir movie? Hometown made? I don't know. Some shit like that. <sighs> but uh, anyways, yeah, the COVID thing, like I, it made me lose some weight, I think dropped a few pounds just chilled in a room for five or six days and didn't eat a whole lot drank a lot of fluids and took some medicine and probably sweated a lot of the fat and sickness out of me it's probably it's probably really good for me honestly my immune system's probably rocking and rolling now but uh yeah i started uh taking that bpc 157 again uh i was taking these stands for body protection compound 157 it's a it's a peptide and it's for healing and i was taking this during covid and i i, I a little before and the whole time during covid um it seemed to uh have done something i'm not sure what but like i just feel good and look a little better you know i don't look great or anything but it you know when you're like a narcissist as i am you stare at yourself long enough you go there's something different here something going on something good and groovy what's this about <sighs> it happens it fucking happens uh yeah but i t I, I used to take the sub sublingual tablets there, there's the, there are these things you'd put under your tongue and they'd kind of dissolve over the next uh, like hour or so just maybe not an hour maybe like 20 minutes and it had like a little minty flavor to it and it honestly just felt like a it was like a breath mint that i just had let dissolve i got it from some like company in florida because that's where it makes all the good supplements and you know banned substances that you can't have in the the olympics but normal people can still use pretty fucking cool it was it was a nasal spray and it had this other peptide called tb 500 tuberculosis 500 something like that tay sachs bitch 500 i don't know um tay sachs shout out to my jews was that my friend phil that's the cool thing about driving around like your like a hometown is you, you're bound to see someone you know um as we all know it's also one of the worst fucking things about driving around your hometown god maybe sh maybe i should go in there i just drove past my favorite watering hole the wicked shamrock irish surf pub 
It doesn't say Irish Surf Pub on the sign anymore, though. It's kind of annoying. I think it's just a wicked shamrock. I think they dropped the Irish Surf Pub part. But shamrock's pretty Irish, if you ask me. Um, anyways, yeah, I'm trying not to go into the bar. I haven't been all weekend, and I got good and drunk at that bar in the place I live yesterday night. Trying not to get too crazy, you know? Don't need to go to the Shamrock every weekend, but it's so hard not to also. Cause it's not just like, a, where, where the fuck is this cord? It's not just like a, like a random bar where I'm going some an alcoholic. Like it's like my friends are there and I'm friends with the bartenders and you know, the, the smoke shop next door is cool people I went to high school with and the PM head shop, check it out. Um. So it's, it's kind of fucking, you know, catch 22. Cause I know I definitely have, you know, some people that are like, you'd really need to go there again. And then I have other people that are like, I'll meet you there. <laughs> so it's fucking weird. I could take this in there do a little podcast, do a little ambient noise, just do a little travel. Oh shit. My check engine light came on again. Fuck. God damn it. That's exactly what I was. Oh no. Oh no. All the lights came on. God damn it. I fucking knew this day was too good to be true god damn it my heart just sank man (sighs) I thought I had these problems figured out but evidently not god fucking damn it dude my whole body just got like bummed this is not good ugh man well video uh podcast gonna have to wait a little longer i gotta get my car fixed and figure out why uh my check engine light my vehicle stability control off and vehicle stability control track button lights are on so video podcast probably gonna happen like in the next month or two at the soonest that's being generous so Let's uh, let's put a pin in that one. Part of yeah, part of the reason I got fuck. I don't even know. I don't want to talk anymore. I'm so bummed. This is a fucking seriously just took the gem out of my jam out of my donut. I'm fucking sad as hell now. This music is not helping after all. It's so funny how quickly the fucking coin can flip. Jesus. Ugh. God, just saw my... Are you fucking kidding me, dude? God, I fucking... Almost just had to fucking not pay for anything, so I almost totaled my car. Just had to get a new one. You f... Oh, my God. I just need to get out of this fucking car. Fucking losing it. Sorry. And I... Part part of that was, you know, my fault. I was uh, looking at my old friend... My ex-friend, ex-best friend, old friend, I don't know. Just my dr- fucking alcoholic, dipshit, idiot, self-inflicting harm f- person I knew. Just funny to, like, see them, like, out and about still. No job, still. No car, still. Nothing to show for their life except alcoholism and cuts on their body. It's like, I, you know, I know people get there for some reason, but there's also a lot of personal responsibility you have to take that you can also, you can take, you know what I mean? So I don't know about that. That's all I'll say about that. This is about two weeks later after the fact. Um, someone noticed I have a microphone in my hand and just pointed at me. That was funny. Um, this is about two weeks after my freak out about the check engine light coming on. Um, I got the check engine lights and everything that popped up to turn off. I reset the codes, did my front brakes. My brother thought it was, uh, maybe something to do with how horrible, horrible my brakes are or were. And we cleared the codes and I drove it for about a week and they didn't come back on, but now they're back on. And I'm also without a podcast. Uh, I kind of, had to, you know, save the money I would use for reaching out and meeting up with people to do a podcast and get my car fixed. And I still gotta, I still gotta get it fixed. Apparently, it didn't do the trick. So, 
Uh, I'm still listening to noir music in the background, so if it's not your thing, I'm sorry. This just isn't your episode. I have 104 other episodes you can listen to. More, probably. Ones that aren't even numbered. So, by all means, you know, just enjoy. Just enjoy me almost getting killed by a Mustang right now. A car, not the horse. Um, Yeah. Uh, Still fucking using cruise control everywhere I go. I'm actually about to turn it on right now. Dude, I fucking love cruise control. It saved me so much gas money. I had no idea. I didn't even know my car had cruise control. I've had three cars, and the first two did not have working cruise control. So I was just like, well, I'm not going to fucking bother with this one either. Just use my foot. Um, and it it's alleviated so much stress. So much of it. Feeling, feeling good for a non-paycheck kind of week. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but like I get paid bi-weekly or by curiously. I don't know. Um, and it, uh, that middle week in between paychecks, sometimes that weekend gets a little stressy, a little stressful. It's not as bad as getting, you know, killed by Russians, uh, in Ukraine right now, but or getting killed by Ukrainians in Ukraine if you're Russian. So, fuck, you know, shout out. Like, it's a, it's an okay problem to have. I've been trying to, that's been like my personal mantra lately, even though mantras are kind of private. Like I have, like I have one that I tell myself, that I keep to myself, that I will never tell anyone. But like, I could just be saying that because you have no proof that I actually say anything. You know what I mean? So it doesn't really m- mean anything or matter until you share the one that kind of does help other people or matter. So that's that's been my uh, philosophy lately is uh, what a nice problem to have. Like it is I'm and what I mean by that is it, it's so much better to just be like, oh, I don't know what I want for dinner tonight. There are all these choices. You know, and there's some people that are starving in you know war-torn countries right now or maybe they're lost in the fucking wilderness and they're starving to death i read a headline about this man uh who was found in griffith park after missing for two weeks he was found dead with his dog by his side the dog was alive that means this fucking pupper this cute good old boy man's best friend stayed by his owner's side for two weeks that's amazing. I don't know if he died two weeks ago, but he's been missing for two weeks. So maybe he was the dog, would, you know, just was alone for a week or whatever, emaciated. I don't know. But they said the dog was emaciated, and I was like, yeah, I'm sure he didn't gnaw on the dead dude's ankle a little bit at all. But it it really hit me in the feels, you know. I'm uh, on my way to go see my dog, too. Good old Remy the dog, Remington. You guys remember Remy? fucking scratching his ass and shaking his collar in the background of the first like 50 episodes <sighs> there's a little while where he wasn't in the podcast and that was sad but he came back and his, it was so nice and uh, honestly one of the best parts of one of my favorite things about having moved back from Oceanside is I get to see my family and I get to see my dog and uh, you know that shit's really important whether pff, you realize it or not when you're younger. Like I was a very like anti-family kind of person. I thought people who like cultures that liked family, which is like fucking every culture. I was like, ugh, gross. They're disgusting. What's the matter with you? Why do you listen to your parents or your siblings or their opinions? I was like, oh, you shouldn't do anything they tell you to do. Like that's ridiculous. You're your own person. I was a very anal retentive little asshole individual wannabe independent person. But uh, I realized I could still be that person and benefit from having like healthy relationships with uh, family members. So I'm growing. I'm learning. I've been pretty, uh, I don't know. I, th- I think it's, I want to give credit to this uh, ADHD medication I've been on, the Stratera, the Atomoxetine, rather, because it's the generic, because I don't have good insurance. <laughs> I have the poor people insurance, but, uh, yeah, it it's really helped me focus stuff. Focus stuff? What the fuck? N- n- you just put narrow stuff down and really put a focus and some order to my life. And it's helped me 
in so many subtle but numerous ways. Just a plentiful world of, uh, I don't know, just attention that it w- I wasn't giving the rest of my life, the rest of my little bits of world, you know? <sighs> like, I'm, I'm just... Ironically, though, before I started the Stratera, I was keeping a calendar, a black, uh, like, calendar book. What are they called? Like, when, like a planner? Yeah, like a planner. Um, it's a fucking planner. That's what they're called. And that was helping me immensely as far as, like, getting uh, goals set, responsibilities set, and getting them accomplished, and getting podcasts scheduled, and getting those squared away. So, um now I, I feel like I still use it daily, you know, if, if not just weekly, like I fill it like to the brim, it's all fucking covered in shit. Even if it's just like spastic, you know, stream of consciousness stuff that I just need to write down. Like the whole, uh, the whole mantra thing, like, uh, what a nice problem to have type of thing like that. I, I write things like that on the outskirts of it and just, just keep myself going. Uh, but, um, yeah, now that I'm fucking I think maybe it's because I'm paying more attention to things and I do get those things accomplished. I don't need to write them down so much, but it feels like I'm lacking, man. It feels like I'm slacking not doing anything with the uh, the planner because it's really cathartic. It feels great. You feel accomplished. I'm a big fan of lists and not like the lists like the Nazis made, but, you know, just just lists like of like, hey, I need I need to do this, that and that. And oh, I have this idea, those ideas and a couple of these ideas. And, you know, and you just mark them off and you go, cool, I want to write a joke about that or I want to go meet a friend and have this or whatever, you know, and lists are the shit, man. If you guys are having any trouble in your life, like as far as organization or just accomplishment on like even like the most menial tasks, especially like tasks that are uh, hold on, I got to turn cruise control off like, like real like real menial tasks, household fucking shit that just gets on your nerves that you, you just you just let pile up like I have a dirty room, you know, I have a I, I li- live in a fucking townhome. I fortunately get the uh, master bedroom and it's a big space so it gets a lot to get dirty so (laughs) me and kylie made sure to just get it dirty we're we're not slobs like it's not the grossest room in the world but as far as clothing goes like it's hard to see the floor man (sighs) i miss when i was like really militant and always clean and orderly and i think that was something that always helped uh my distractions in general was just doing chores like housework cleaning cleaning so healthy i don't know why i have no idea why but it's like good for your psyche man every time i clean and organize something or like empty my pockets or it it just it's a good move i i recommend it i uh i know i know that there's some scumbags out there that listen to this and i'm surprised you made it this far and i'm surprised you figured out how to download a podcast but you know, clean once in a while and maybe you'll have a podcast of your own someday. You'll be talking to yourself in your car that's broken on your way to a town of fucking homeless drug addicts and shit. Um, shout out to Lompoc, by the way. God, uh, the tattoo artist, tattooer? I think tattoo artist is kind of like not PC or it's like, oh man, there's this fucking glass. Sorry to be so ADHD. I, I still have ADHD, mind you, guys. It, uh, like the, the medication did not eradicate it. That's something I've, I've come to realize is like, oh, I'm going to have this for the most of my, like the rest of time. But the medication helps like, you know, zipper some stuff up, you know, trims the fat a little, gets the edges kind of stitched up. Um, speaking of stitch, stitches and tattoos, um, <sighs> going to have um, just Lady Sarandon I don't, yeah, I don't even remember her last name at this point. You, you ever see someone like they change their, their name on social media and then you just forget what they actually like the, what their legal government name is kind of like Dallas Bronson. Um, yeah. Um, well, I, I'm getting, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Sorry. There was this little glass aquarium or like glass, like cage or something sitting on the side of Harris grade road over here. And I want to pull over and shoot it so badly like just just make it shatter but like 
I don't want to litter or like make more glass over there. Like it's already there. You know what I mean? It's already broken. It's already just going to make it grosser and worse. And I just think people that go to the side of the road of like a nice, beautiful, like these hills, these little mountainous areas outside Lompoc, people who go out here and make the, uh, I just waved at someone that I thought was Phil Giles and it was not. He just had a little Toyota car like Phil has. Sorry, weirdo. Um, Anyone who just comes over here and dumps all that shit is just, like, just throw yourself off the fucking cliff with it because you're garbage, and it's so fucking lame. There's literal dumps. There's places where you can take this, and it's not the side of the road. Like, I'm not that gross. I'm not taking my dirty laundry in my bedroom and throwing it off the side of the fucking road. Can't believe people. I can, but it's just, ugh. Like it's, it's just so gross. It's like you're making this look like a fucking third world country. It's hard enough as it is trying to keep it a first world country. Just, it's nasty. Stop. So much garbage. It's like, just do what everyone else does. Take it to Goodwill. Throw it there. Why do I have to fucking have it ruin this beautiful drive that should otherwise be, you know, pleasant? <sighs> but, uh, yeah, Lompoc, man. D- the tattooer owns fortified tattoo in uh in Lompoc he drew this postcard I don't know if it's for like a postcard contest or like it's uh he painted it actually drew paint I don't know and it it's like there's a rocket and like flowers and wine grapes and a doobie and I was like that is the most Lompoc looking thing beautiful color scheme too and god I just I want it man I want it like on a t-shirt or like a you know, framed, hung up somewhere. I'm thinking about getting tattoos soon. I know I said I'll probably never get any more, but I also said like, oh, I'll probably eventually get more. I just like, I'm good for right now. I just didn't see myself getting any like for the rest of my twenties. You know, I got what, nine tattoos. I'm 26. Like I'm good. Like I can just chill. They're not big. They're not, I'm not ruining a bunch of real estate. Uh, and I intend to live at least another couple of years. So like, I don't want to just blow out my whole body. There's people who are young and just like cover themselves in tattoos. And it's like, you're not even going to like this five years from now, let alone fucking 25 years from now when you could just saved your leg for a cool sleeve. Like when people arrive in their forties and fifties and get sleeves or like a tattoo, like that's so cool to me, you know? And and I'm not speaking about tattooers, tattoo, like that's a whole different, like you're in that wheelhouse. Like it makes sense. Like you, it's just part of it. Doesn't, you know, it doesn't bother me, but there was this goober who used to linger around the hardcore shows and all the punk shows and shit in Lompoc. I think he's from like Ventura or Oxnard. So he's pretending to be Nardcore, I'm sure. But he ended up like knowing someone who does tattoos or like, you know, you know, like, you know, when anyone's getting a bunch of tattoos, it's like, are you fucking the tattoo artist? Like, is that what, is that what's going on? Or like, you just work there or like their, their friend, they, they know their friend, their friend's an apprentice and they just let them practice on them. It's a, uh, it's kind of interesting, but it's, it's, you, they, he just got just fucking blasted neck, hands, arms, maybe his legs. I wasn't looking at his legs. I think if you notice a guy's legs, you're either judging him for skipping leg day or you're gay or you're both. It, also, I don't think I, you should see another man's legs unless you're at the beach or exercising or like ankles in general. Like I'm not a fan of shorts, shorts. I'm really just talking about ankles here, you know, legs, whatever you can wear shorts. I don't get it. I don't get shorts, but that's why my legs are pale. And uh, hopefully I'll come around the uh, ankles. I don't need, I have cankles. Maybe I'm just bitter because I still got cankers, cankles, fucking big thickies. The circumference of my cankles is the circumference of like most people's biceps. So and for those of you looking up the word circumference right now, thank you for being a longtime listener of the Bad Etiquette Podcast. <sighs> I've done this drive so many times and it never 
ceases to amaze me how many people cannot just fucking go. I'm going 10 miles an hour right now. 10. Like one zero. Like the first double digit in the letter out al- or in the number alphabet. One, two, three, four cars are all stuck behind some chump who has a bunch of shit in the back of his truck. And honestly, it looks like me, uh, looks like it to, uh, to me, at least looks like he was going to dump that shit. So could you pull over if you're going to dump it so we can move on with our more quality lives? <sighs> this music's been just kind of setting me up for like relaxation and just kind of like introspection and uh, I've been like just so more calm lately less stressed I went to jujitsu fucking what three four times last week before they moved uh, moved rooms they moved right next door so we'll see if I do any jujitsu this upcoming week but it's uh it's been a great week in terms of like that confidence you get anytime something's like feeling a little funky, like a little, like a little funny tasting, like, Oh, I'm like a little antsy or I'm a little anxious or like, ah, I got like, maybe I'm not as comfortable in like my body as I thought I was. It just means I need to go to jujitsu like even more. I actually, uh, shout out to my fucking skate homie, my skate rat homie, Edwin Espinoza. He fucking showed up at, uh, the jujitsu gym I go to Gracie Baja in uh, solving the Gracie Baja San Inez Valley fucking audited the class checked it out and looks like he's gonna come do some jujitsu or at least you know at least entertained the idea that's cool fucking it was so cool when you do something like kind of individual like an individual sport like skateboarding you meet a lot of really cool people and a lot of really individual people so there's a almost like a like a peripheral respect you have for each other because it's like I'm here for me doing this. I'm on my four wheels. Like I can't just be right next to you and your four wheels. So like we've known each other or known of each other for fucking ever and it, it's so cool to like take that and witness how much that inherent respect and friendship that skateboarding provides can just bleed into something like walking into my jujitsu gym and he's sitting there on the bench and just like, fuck man. Like it was my last class in that building. That was really cool to see him there. And I, I stayed a little later. Everyone went over next door to see, look at the new room and everything. And I just laid on the mats afterwards and just, I just soaked it all in. Just thought about all the times I was fucking driving home in silence. Cause I got my ass handed to me that day or, all these times I actually f- submitted someone and all the unique opportunities I had of like, dang, I never rolled with a, this type of person before. And just, just, you know, just sh- cramming all the two and a half, three ish years of jujitsu into my head in that room, just letting it kind of bleed out, just a little cool down stretch and everything. It was really nice. And I know you're not supposed to say this. So if you, anyone who's listening to this, that's ever been, submitted by me or choked or whatever first of all i'm sorry um if it was outside of the jujitsu gym like i'm sure we were just fucking drunk and fucking around and you had it coming bitch but um it's four-way stop there's four of us someone fucking go god damn idiots um yeah, the, I know you're not supposed to say this, but there is literally no better feeling than strangling someone that's trying to strangle you. Like you're actively fighting to see who is going to potentially or at least simulate the strangulation or like the, you know, the murder of the other person. Like if there is no rules, we weren't we were just in the fucking streets or a bar fight or some shitty thing. Like, unfortunately, how my brother-in-law was killed. Like, I, you know, you get to that person first. Your whole body, your whole DNA is like, yes. Your caveman DNA is just like, doo, 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 just like releasing these endorphins of like, you won, you succeeded, victory. Just all this like brutal, uh, it, it feels so good. There's just this 
jovial jubilation in your brain that can only be reciprocated not reciprocated but uh only be um i don't even what's the word i'm looking for like you cannot replicate it it will not be replicated it is something that happens when you are taking someone's air and blood from them before they do it to you you're defending yourself you're playing a game you're playing by rules you're succeeding so there's all of these little all these little pieces that just bring it together and bring it home and man it feels great i got a couple submissions uh last time i was in the gym and it they felt so good they felt better than usual they were a little like I think too is like when you when you roll when you wrestle or when you anyone who does any competitive sports really anything competitive when you go against a really good person or someone who has some good skill shit like that you feel great when you succeed you, you test your actual your personal skills and you know what you've developed against someone who has developed some it, it's it's fantastic. It's putting it to the test in this beautiful way and, you know, grim way too cuz like I said, if there's no if there's no mats, no gym, if there's no room, if it's just in the streets, we're just I'm just fighting one of these hobo junkies out here and good old Lompoc like it's for keeps, son. So ah, beautiful fog town. I love the weather like this. I, I know that's another thing that's kind of like weird, like you're not supposed to like, but I love the fogginess and with the the film noir music in Lompoc, this place is just dying for like a cool independent film noir movie, like a modern day, like gritty, like what was that movie, A Brick? I haven't seen it, but it's on all the like top 10 noir film lists and shit so it I, to me i i'm already calling it like it's just, just echoing i just saw someone wearing a mask in their car what are you doing dude it's fucking april 2022 you think you're gonna die at this point by yourself stupid um probably gonna die alone because you're a goddamn nerd Like, whose immune system is so compromised? They're like, I can't even trust breathing my own air in here. And they put a mask on. I don't get it. I'm not even trying to make a joke. Like, it's actually, I did make a joke at the beginning of the pandemic, April 2020, two, was that two years ago? Um, and then the guy who played Hercules stole it. I literally had a joke thief. I mean, I did put it on Twitter, so my fault for being like, naive enough to think someone's not just going to hijack a funny they see and pass it off as their own. But the fact that it was the dude from Hercules, what's his name? Anyways, I, I can't think of his name right now. He's really not important, but I, 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 I did that joke. And then my buddy, uh, Honeycutt, Zach Honeycutt, you know, former, uh, two time guest of the podcast. Um, he was at a comedy club. I think he was working at a comedy club or he was doing his stand up there. And he was like, I literally just heard your fucking joke about masks in the car, like sitting alone in the, in the car with a mask on. And I was like, and at that point I was like, yeah, I'd really doubt that guy all the way in fucking Colorado stole my joke. I think it's just parallel thinking. And I just happened to share mine first. So I got all butthurt about it but it was it was like a, wearing a mask alone in your car is like flirting with a condom on like you're not in any danger and you might be potentially but there's no need for it you know it was just like a little throwaway one line like that but well, it's all good it's fine i'm i'm fine about it you guys are okay about it i'm okay about it i let it go i'm still gonna tell the joke you know spoiler alert when you guys see my stand up like That'd be kind of brutal. You go see some stand-up right now, and they're just like, what's up with us? COVID. You're all sitting there maskless, like drunk as hell. They're like, why are you bringing up old shit, bro? What the fuck, man? Like, we're past that. Like, we're talking about Ukraine, kind of. We're over that, too. How fast did people stop talking about Ukraine, Russia? World War Three, like, was two weeks, apparently. And then it was just like, oh, I'm pissed about gas prices still, and everyone stopped talking about that. Like the actual 
newsreel of like timeline people give any any story or any content is so brief nowadays with the internet with you know with the with the interwebs the www what the hell is going on in the world dot gov it is banana i sound like such an old fuck but it, it shit the, the news cycle just recycles not recycle well, it does recycle but it just fucking refreshes so often i don't even know what the like big story of the day is I think there was like a shooting in Sacramento. There was like some fight and some dude just like whipped out a gun and sh- killed six people and shot 12 others. <laughs> yeah, it's weird because if you think about it in, in California, you can only have 10 round magazines, but if he killed six people and shot 12, that means he had maybe two 10 round magazines on him, which is legal, uh, or he had more than 10 round magazines, which is I guess, I guess the law didn't work. I don't know what happened. Those criminals just don't know what to do. They just can't follow the laws. It's like, why bother fucking disarming law-abiding citizens? Because the, the people who aren't going to follow the law anyways are just going to be armed and dangerous. So fucking let the people who would respect the law in the first place have a fighting chance. Give me a fucking magazine with like 29,100 rounds. Anyways, um... For those of you who are idiots out there, apologies. Magazine is what they call clips in the movies. Um, I just pulled up to the good old homestead of mom. So I'm going to go in and see the dog crack my back and uh, bullshit with the uh, family. So I'll talk to you guys. I don't know. Maybe this is the end of the podcast. End of the episode at least. So um, ta-ta for now.